by Congressman Jeff Van Drew, Republican of New Jersey, on the House Judiciary Committee. And how many years has it been, Congressman, since you came over to be a Republican? Uh, there you are telling uh, President about, Trump you're on the Republican team. I remember this. It was such a big deal. How are you, sir? Welcome. I'm doing great, and it's great to be with you as well. Uh, so, Pomerantz. Tell our viewers uh, who this guy is and do me a favor. Have you guys read his book yet? Because that book, he is, I think he reveals himself. There's so much in this book. You subpoenaed him. What comes next? Well, the bottom line is, I mean, first of all, some people say, gee, do we have a right to do that? Absolutely. Because when you're possibly looking at future legislation, future laws, to prevent this from ever happening again. What a dark day for the United States of America. Uh, I mean, it just makes me so sad inside to see what's going on. And Pomerantz is, uh, you know, uh, just a very unpleasant individual that uh, I don't think loves the United States of America, and he's a partisan hack. The thing about Bragg and Pomerantz, they're both partisan hacks they are not in any way prosecutorial. They're not in any way concerned with the future welfare of uh, New York City. And Pomerantz was so intense in his hatred of Trump that he didn't think Bragg was moving fast enough. And when Bragg didn't move fast enough, he actually resigned and then wrote his memoirs, which which you've read some of, and uh, I think people would be shocked when they did. Yeah, These here's, are bad guys. Here's a moment, and oh, by the way, uh, so much about this dude, but uh, let's play 06 and 07 together. This is, he was bending over backwards. At, he admits it, bending over backwards, trying to find a convoluted way to get Trump. Go ahead. I thought that the hush money could be charged as the proceeds of Clifford's extortion of Donald Trump. Admittedly, this was a somewhat awkward construct. Step one would be to prove that Trump was, in effect, a blackmail victim. Creative legal theory, neither intuitive nor obvious. The district attorney raised his eyebrows at the notion that we would be claiming that Donald Trump was a victim of blackmail. So for a moment, OK, wow, he gets it. He's a victim here. What they wanted to say, he's a victim so there was a crime. They needed a victim because there's no victim here. If they could say that right. there was a victim, that handing over your wallet or handing over your money to, say, your mugger, that somehow giving the money is furtherance of a crime. Therefore, you're guilty of the crime. It's insane. The whole thing doesn't make sense. This is a completely vacuous case. There's nothing to it. It's false. It's like so many of the other things that the president has gone through impeachment one, impeachment two, uh, the phone call to Ukraine, Russian collusion. I could just keep going on and on. These people just can't stop, and they don't realize they're hurting the country. And you know what? I, I want the people that are listening out there to realize um, they're not just going after Donald Trump. They're going after us. He's just in the way, as he said. Um, this is something that we're really going to look into on the Judiciary Committee. Uh, the chairman has made it very clear we're going to do this in a very methodical way, a very honest way. This is not going to be a January 6th hearing. This is going to be the real thing. We're going to do this right. Uh, I like it. I like the sound of that. And, oh, by the way, you know, the, the liberals are disappointed in this indictment, okay? And they had a sense. And when Pomerantz was making the rounds promoting his book, uh, some of them are like, is that all there is? Take a look at this, please. You are making waves because of the government job. If you say, oh, I couldn't do it on Thursday, but I quit, so I'm doing it on Friday. The underlying substantive legal issues are the same, are they not? Whether it is fair to the subjects of probes. I mean, you had enormous power. You. I'll let you finish, but I'm not talking no. about whether it's Donald Trump. I'm talking about the powers you had and whether it's fair to everyone under the law. I'm sure as a prosecutor, you understand and agree that everyone is entitled to equal uniform treatment. Let me, let me stop you yeah. though. In fairness, you know what was in that grand jury testimony, though. So you know what... It, it, you can't unknow that information. So even though you're using the public record, what you choose to excerpt is certainly not... Is it not influenced by what you know took place in the grand jury? I mean, you can see there's skepticism about him, but do you think that's the reason why Bragg went forward? Because this guy wrote the book. It got some liberals excited. 
and there was a great deal of pressure. Might have been quiet pressure, but from the Soros crowd, uh, did that guy pull the trigger on this or make Bragg pull the trigger? Well, I think he's a lot. I think he's a great deal behind it, and I think he's a little bit uh, uh, more dangerous even than Bragg. And Bragg's a pretty dangerous man. And these are people that don't care what they do to the people around them. That only have one thing in mind: to make sure that they change the fabric of this nation and to make sure that they destroy Donald Trump. Because they know if Donald Trump becomes president of the United States, he's going to crack this rotten egg called Washington, D.C. open, let all the stench out, let everybody see what the, the corruption that exists, not only there, but in some other places like Chicago, New York, and other areas as well. Um, yeah. in, in, it's a horrible thing what's happened, but maybe this gives us the opportunity to really dig in and show the American people, and I think the American people see it, by the way, you see that Donald Trump's numbers are going up, yep. what's really going on. We're going to conduct these hearings the right way, mm -hmm. and it's going to be quite revealing. Congressman Van Drew, very quickly, uh, I would imagine you lost a lot of friends when you became a Republican. You left the Democrat Party, but I also imagine you gained a lot of friends, too. What was that transition I like? I did gain a lot of friends. It's a difficult thing. You have to really and remember. Um, interestingly enough, the uh, for you know some congressmen have changed uh, from one party to another. Rarely, but it's happened. Oh. But I'm the only one in history that's ever gone from the majority party to the minority party. That's how much I believed in it. That's yeah. how strongly I felt about it and how disgusted I was with what was going on. Look, I'm not a Republican. Uh, I'm an independent, but I I. I know you did the right thing. I mean, that party is. Me too. Congressman Jeff Andrew, we appreciate it, and we'll be right back.